Welcome back everyone to some more examples with greatest common factor from algebra. Our first problem here, we have 14x squared minus 21x plus 7. So remember what we'll do is we'll go through each term. Remember terms are separated by add and subtract, so here I have three terms. We'll go through each term. We'll focus on the coefficient greatest common factor and then the greatest common factor of any variables that are part of each term. So if we look at 14, 21, and 7, we should be able to see that the greatest common factor of those is 7. So we're pulling out 7 and then we say 7 times what gives us each term. So 7 times what gives me 14, 7 times 2, and then we have no variables, no x's at all, so we will need all of this x squared when we distribute the 7 to make the first term. So 7 times that will give us 14x squared. I have subtract, so I'll write down minus. 7 times what gives me 21x? Answer is I will need a 3 and I will also need an x since I have none out here. And I factored out 7. Some people will look at this and they'll make a really simple beginning mistake and they'll say, oh, well, I've pulled out 7, so there's nothing left. But we want to be careful because the idea is that factor is the opposite of distribute. And if I distribute my greatest common factor, I should be able to get back what I started with. And 7 times nothing won't give us the 7. So 7 times what gives us the 7? We actually need plus 1 there, right? So that when I distribute the 7, if I were to multiply each term by that, I would get what I started with after doing that. Let's look at the next one. 35x cubed plus 28x squared minus 10x. If we look here, 35 and 28 and 10, it turns out that they don't have anything in common except 1. 1 is the greatest common factor. And so if we're going to pull out a 1, we don't really do that because it doesn't change anything dividing anything by 1. So the numbers in front, the coefficients have nothing in common. We move to the variables x cubed, x squared, and x. I'll have at least an x, so it turns out the only thing we can factor out is just a single copy of x. And if I pull out only one copy of x from each term, it should be easy to tell what is left, right? x times what would give me 35x cubed? Well, it would be 35x squared. x times what gives me 28x squared? So put the plus down, it would be 28x. And then x times what gives me negative 10x? Answer would be the negative 10, minus 10 there. So we will just get x outside x times the quantity 35x squared plus 28x minus 10. Next example, we have 100x to the 5 plus 50x cubed plus 25x squared. Looking at 150 and 25, I can pull out a common factor of 25. They all have at least 25 in common, and they all have at least an x squared. So 25x squared is our greatest common factor. 25x squared times what would give me 100x to the fifth? 25 times 4 would give me the 100, and x squared times x cubed would give me x to the fifth. Next term, 25x squared times what gives me 50x cubed? So I say plus, and then I say 25 times 2 would give me the 50, and x squared times x would give me the x cubed. So we've got the second term taken care of. 25x squared times what would give me 25x squared? This is similar to the 7 on the first page. Don't forget, you need to put a plus 1 down there. It is 25x squared times 1 that would actually give you the last term. So that when we distribute, we would get back what we started with. Okay, so that's the answer on that one. Let's move down to this one. We have two different variables now. You've noticed this is a little different than what we've done so far in our videos. Same idea, uh, we just want to be careful with the different variables. So if I look at first the coefficients, 64 and 8, they both have an 8 in common, so I'm going to factor out 8. And then I say, what is in common with the variables. So for something to be a common factor, it needs to be the same variable and the same power, right? The same number of copies of that variable. They, they do have the same power, but they are not the same variable. This does not have any y's and this does not have any x's. So when it comes to pulling out any variables, we would not do that in this case. So we would just say 8 is the greatest common factor. 8 times what gives us 64x squared? The answer would be 8 times 8 gives us the 64, and we would need the full x squared. 
to multiply in there, put our subtract here, and then eight times what will give us the eight? Y squared, well, we already have the eight, so eight times one would give us the eight times one. We won't write that down. And then we would need the full Y squared times the eight to give us the second term. Okay, so GCF of just eight there, left over is eight X squared minus Y squared. Next couple here, five AB squared minus 15 A squared B plus 20 B squared. So here we have three terms. I have some A's and B's, I have coefficients. We'll just go in order. So if I look at five and 15 and 20, five will go into all of those. If I look at the A's, I notice I have a single A here. I have an A squared here, but I don't have any A's in the last term. So no A's in common for all terms, which means I can't pull out an A. If I look at the B's, I have a B squared, I have a B, I have a B squared. They do all have at least one B, so I can go ahead and pull out a B as well. So the greatest common factor is 5B. And then what do I multiply 5B to get each one? Well, 5 times 1 would give me the 5. I'm not going to write down times 1. Um, I would need the A. A would be missing. And to make b squared, I would need another b. So a times b will be my first term. Write down the subtract. 5 times what gives us 15? Answer is 3. Uh, here, I don't have any of the a squareds out here. So when I distribute there, I would need all of the a squareds in here to give me a squared. And then the b is already out here, and I only need one b. So I don't need to multiply any more b's to get the b that I have there. Second term is done. We'll write our plus. And then 5 times what would give us 20? 5 times 4. Uh, b times what would give us b squared? We would need one more copy of b. b times b would give us b squared. So we get 5b on the outside as our greatest common factor. ab minus 3a squared plus 4b in parentheses. Looking at the next one. Uh, we'll start with the coefficients. So I have 4, 16, and 32. 4 will go into all of those. If I look at the a's this time, I have a squared, a, and a squared. So they all have at least an a. That is the most they all contain. And if I look at each term for b's, I have b and b squared and b squared. They all have at least a single b. So 4ab will be our greatest common factor. 4ab times what will give us 4a squared b? I'm missing one copy of a in here, so 4ab times a would give us 4a squared b. Plus 4 times what gives us 16? Answer is 4. Notice if I distribute here, I already have all the a's that I need. b times what would give us b squared? I would need an additional copy of b for that one. And then thinking about how to make 32a squared b squared from 4ab. 4ab times what will give us this? Well, 4 times 8 will give us 32, so we'll put plus 8. Uh, a times, I would need another a to make a squared. And then b times what would give us b squared? I would also need another b. So we have 4ab as our GCF times the quantity a plus 4b plus 8. A, B. Let's look at our last two examples here. We've got uh, more than one variable in each of these, so looking through here, hopefully we can see, after taking a second, what goes into all of these coefficients. 9 will go into all of those coefficients. How many x's do we have in common? If you look at all of the x terms, x cubed, x squared, x, they all have at least a single x. So we'll pull out an x. And then if we look at y squared and y cubed and y to the 4, y squared, they all have at least that much. So y squared is also part of our greatest common factor. And now we just say this times what gives us each term. So 9 times the 4 will give us the 36. x times what will give us x cubed? x squared is the answer. y squared times what will give us y squared? Answer is 1 times 1 doesn't change anything. Put down the minus, 9 times what is 72? Answer is 8. x times what gives us x squared? Answer is x. y squared times what gives us y cubed? We would need one more y. Put the add down, 9 times what gives us the 81 in the last term? Answer is 9. x times what gives us x? 
just times 1, so we don't need any more x's, and then y squared times what gives us y to the 4? Answer is y squared. So that is our answer on that one. We get 9xy squared, and then we get 4x squared minus 8xy plus 9y squared. Last one in our GCF videos here. Uh, three variables in this one, and we have coefficients, so we'll just look at it. 12 and 9 and 6 all are divisible by 3. x and x squared and x cubed all have at least an x. Look at the y's now. y squared, y squared, and y squared. They're all the same. They all have at least y squared, so that's part of our GCF. And then looking at z cubed, z squared, and z, they all have at least as well a z. So 3xy squared z is our greatest common factor. So just go one piece at a time. 3 times what is 12? 4. x times what is x? Times 1. Don't change anything. y squared times what is y squared? 1. Don't change anything. z times what is z cubed? z squared. We would need two more copies. Put down the plus we've got there. Now second term, 3 times what is 9? Answer is 3. x times what is x squared? We would need another x. y squared times what is y squared? Answer is 1. We don't write anything. z times what is z squared? Answer is one more copy of z. Put down the plus. Last term, here we go. 3 times what is 6? 3 times 2 is 6 x times what is x cubed? I would need two more copies of x, x squared. y squared times what is y squared? Again, just like all these other terms, times one won't change anything. z times what is z? Again, times one. We don't need to write times one. We'll just leave that as it is. And that is our answer for the final one. So we get 3xy squared z times this quantity, which is 4z squared plus 3xz plus 2x squared. Okay, that is greatest common factor. Hopefully we've given you plenty of examples to go off of. We're going to start factoring some other things, doing grouping and doing trinomials and lots of other factoring tricks. So check out the next video. Keep going with your factoring.